Welcome along to this video presentation from the Computer Information Agency. My name is Robert Crane and in this video we'll have a look at doing a standard install of SharePoint 2010 Foundation onto a uh, Windows standalone server. So what I've done before uh, this is I have downloaded the SharePoint Foundation EXE, the executable file from the web. Um, what you'll also notice there is that I am on a Windows Server 2008 R2, uh, in this case an enterprise server. It's currently uh, just a uh, not connected to any domain. You'll also notice that I have no other application here, so there's no databases, there's no SQL. So when I do a standard installation of SharePoint Foundation, it will install uh, what it requires for me. So what I'm going to do rather than clicking the uh, EXE is I'm actually going to extract that um, the files that are part of that installer. So what I do is I actually run the installer but also add the extract option at the end. So what that's going to now prompt me for is where do I want to extract these files. So I'm going to put them in a directory I've already created called WSF. So it will then proceed to uh, extract all the files from this uh, exe and from there we can then run um, the pre-installer. So our files have extracted successfully so let's go in here and look at that directory. So in that directory you'll notice there are a number of files uh, and one of those is the, the setup option. But what we're actually going to do in this case is the recommendation is generally to run uh, the pre-installer. So the job of the pre-installer is to make sure that all the required software um, has been downloaded and installed on the machine as well as configuring the IIS and anything else under Windows that is needed. So to do that I'm going to right mouse click and to run this as an administrator. You'll see when it uh, commences, this is what it's going to do. So it's going to try and um, set up the IIS for us, install a number of software applications and as well as some patches. So I'll simply go next, uh, now accept the licensing agreement, go next, and you'll see that the pre-installer now kicks off. So the very first thing it's going to start doing is to configure the application server role um, for IIS. Now depending on the speed of your machine this may take uh, a number of minutes to complete. Uh, you'll notice that the only option here that I have is to cancel uh, but this will now continue on and configure and install and download uh, the required software as needed. So as you can see now what it's doing is uh, downloading and installing uh, the additional options here and again in this case it's downloading and installing um, a service pack. Um, it will completely work through all the ones that are required on your machine. Uh, the important thing to remember here is that some of these uh, hotfixes or patches may require a server update before you uh, continue on. So again that's something to keep in mind once all these uh, products have been installed. Once the process is complete you will receive this summary uh, screen. You'll notice here that it has exactly what it has been configured and installed and you'll notice that if you go through the list here it's important to check that all the items here have been installed successfully. So we notice here that we are um, successfully installed all the uh, components so we're now ready to finish. Um, because it's installed some of the service packs you'll probably notice that as soon as I press the, the finish button um, the server may reboot. It's recommended that what you should do here generally is to reboot the server because as you can appreciate it's had a number of patches and updates uh, installed on it. So what we'll do here just to be on the safe side is we will do a restart and continue on from there once we have um, done a clean start.
So we've uh, come back and rebooted our server. Uh, we have all the prerequisites installed. So now what we can do is go back into our installation directory and we can run our setup. So right mouse click on that and run it as an administrator. That will uh, launch the splash screen and give us the uh, prompts to go through and install a standard installation of SharePoint Foundation 2010. So the first screen that we're presented with is to accept the terms of the software licensing, which we do. And we're now presented with two options. So we can do a standalone or a server farm. So in this case, we're just going to do a simple standalone installation. So I select that option and you'll notice that we're prompted with no other options here and the installation now commences. So this part of our installation is installing the binary files into our uh, C drive by default because again you'll notice that we were not prompted um, for a location and that's where it is installing it by default. Once the installation of the binaries has completed, we are now prompted to run the configuration wizard. You'll notice here that by default the option to run the wizard uh, is checked. So I'll leave that checked and go close. Uh, that will now automatically commence the configuration wizard for me. So the wizard has now commenced. Uh, basically we just need to push the next. You'll notice here that the wizard will restart the IIS uh, server, so any uh, other applications that use the web service on this server will be interrupted, but that's okay, so I select yes to continue. You'll notice here now that it launches straight into the configuration, so again we've got 10 tasks to complete. Uh, the only option we've got here is the cancel button. Um, we need to let that obviously run through um, and complete all 10 tasks. Once the process has been completed, we simply click the uh, finish button and we'll find that it uh, automatically launches a browser and in this case, because it's configured the SharePoint site on the default uh, URL of the server name on port 80, um, it means that the first website here, the default website, um, is now a SharePoint 2010 website. So it will bring that up in a, in a second for us to have view. We can now see the default uh, SharePoint 2010 Foundation site is displayed um, as expected, but as you'll notice there have been no other options for us to configure. So if we now have a look at what else uh, this basic or standalone installation has done, if we go and look at all programs we'll notice that we have a SharePoint 2010 products uh, folder with the central administration site, but you'll also notice that by default it has installed Microsoft SQL Server 2008. Uh, the important thing to note with this version is that there is a 4 gigabyte database limit so this means that your SharePoint site cannot grow beyond 4 gigabytes by default. You'll also notice that it has installed Microsoft SQL Server 2008 but hasn't given you any of the graphical user interface tools so there's no management studio here. So again if we want to just uh, view the administration site we can simply uh, click on that and run it as an administrator. Uh, we have to log in to the site because we are doing so uh, on a server. And uh, as you can see, this is the standard central admin. And uh, so that is normal. We can configure it as required. And if we have a look at our team site, we see that it's all set up and ready to go. So this has been an example of a uh, default or standalone installation of SharePoint Foundation 2010 on a Win standard Windows server that is currently not connected to any domain. Uh, you'll notice that by default not only does it install SharePoint, it installs it uh, to the default website on port 80 and also installs uh, a version of SQL Server 2008. Importantly to note that this version only allows a maximum database size of 4 gigabytes. 
So that's the end of this uh, video. Thank you very much for watching.